So we're gonna now wrap up our coverage of the Java Executive Framework. We have two more lessons left to do here. The first one is gonna be looking a little bit more detail at the Java Executor's Utility class. And I'll walk through some of the key methods in the Executor's Utility class and talk about how they're implemented. So you recall that the Executor's class is a Java Utility class. What is a Java Utility class? Well, in Java, the Utility class is a final class having only static methods no non-static state and a private constructor. It defines a bunch of utility methods that's used by various classes in the executor framework. You can see here things like uh, there's callable that converts a runnable into a callable and so on and so forth. There's also a method called default thread factory and so on. Here's a quick overview of the default thread factory. It sets new threads into a known state. And this is typically used if you want to control what kinds of threads are going to be created by the whatever thread pool you use in order to give them special properties that are important for your application. The default thread factory is used by these factory methods. So new cache thread pool, new fixed thread pool, and new scheduled thread pool, they all use the default thread factory. If you don't like that, then you can customize what the thread pool does and the factory does, and you can have your own thread pool instead. And they, this is shown here. You can see that we have some other factory methods that use user-defined thread pool objects that can be passed by the, the thread pool factory methods in the Java Executor's Utility class. Why do we do this? As I mentioned before, this enables apps to create custom thread subclasses with priorities and with perhaps a, a name that you want, a special name, so it's easier to tell when you do a debugging statement that you're using a thread from your pool, and so on and so forth. There are also factor methods that can be used to create a callable from a runnable, as you can see here. And in this particular case, what this does is it creates something called a runnable adapter. Runnable adapter is going to convert a runnable into a callable. And you can see kind of what it does down here. So we're making a runnable adapter that just basically uses null for the return value because of course there's no return value from a runnable, but sometimes we wanna make it look like it works with the callable APIs. The Java Executor's Utility class also defines various factor methods to make executor thread pools. You can see here there's, gosh, probably about uh, 10 to a dozen of these methods. I just show a few of them here. And you can also, believe it or not, create a thread pool with just one thread. The thread pools you see here, like fixed thread pool, work stealing pool, cache thread pool, those can be used to create multiple threads, pull thread pools with multiple threads. But then there's also ones you can create where there's just a single thread. And that turns out to be useful primarily for things like debugging. Here's the way you create a fixed size thread pool using the new fixed thread pool factor method. You can see that it uses the thread pool executor class which we've talked about before, and it passes the number of threads, which is passed as a parameter to a new fixed thread pool. It passes that in to the thread pool executor's first two parameters, which is the, the minimum core size and the kind of the core size that you want to keep around, which is the core size you keep around. And then it's also the core size, which you can grow to. It doesn't time out idle threads. They stick around for, for in perpetuity, and they'll be recreated if for some reason they crash. Threads can block on a shared unbounded queue, as you can see here. And there's also a thread factory that's passed in that you can use to dictate what kind of threads are actually created by this fixed size thread pool. There's a variant of the new fixed thread pool that uses the default thread factory. There's also a method called new cache thread pool, which creates variable size thread pools. As you can see here, it doesn't take a size parameter Instead, all it does is it creates a new thread pool executor like the fixed thread pool does, except in this case, it starts new threads as needed and will let threads stick around as long as you, as you desire. So it, they'll basically, um, sorry, it, it goes up to a max value. So you can't create more than the max number of integer threads, that would be an astronomically large number, like 2 billion threads, which you probably wouldn't do anyway, but that's the max limit. There's timeout parameters that are passed in here that could be used to terminate and remove threads from the cache thread pool if they're not used for 60 seconds. 
it uses a very interesting cue called a synchronous cue, not an asynchronous cue, but a synchronous cue. And that essentially does a rendezvous with a new worker thread. So the way it works is when you call new cache thread pool, it will block until either an existing thread in the pool picks up the request because it was not busy, or if a new thread has to be created because all the other threads are busy. And as we saw earlier with new fixed thread pool, there's also a thread factory you can pass in that can be used to create a custom thread factory. <laughs> and there's also a variant of this that uses the default thread factory, if you, if you so desire, which is the common use case in, in most situations. The third type of thread pool that you can create using the factory methods in the Java executive utility class is a new work stealing pool. As you can see here, you take uh, the parallelism parameter and you make a new fork join pool and you pass in the degree of parallelism you want, which would often default to the number of cores on the platform, but you can set it to whatever you want it to be. And then it goes ahead and it uses another helper class, which creates a work thread factory that is designated to work with the work stealing threads in the fork join pool. So that's the end of the overview of Java executors utility class. We've used this throughout all the different assignments in order to create the appropriate type of thread pool under the right.